right, here we go. What is going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome back to a very special episode of the Mindless Horror Podcast. I am here with some of the cast and producer of Willie's Wonderland. There is, uh, we got Beth Grant. We got David Sheftel. We got producer Grant Kramer. And of course, we got Christian Delgro. So how are you guys doing today? We're great. Good. Thank you. Thanks I, uh, for having us. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. I mean, first off, thank uh, you guys for not only, you know, acting in such a, a freaking amazing film, but just all together making this film possible. I mean, I watched it with a group of friends. And from start to finish, we couldn't take our eyes off of it. We had no breaks, none of thing. We, we, we watched it start to finish, and it was just fun. I had a great time watching this film. Um, awesome. Yeah, I, uh, you guys all did a phenomenal, and um, I got I want I want to just jump right into it. I mean, I gotta I gotta know. I mean, this was of course you had of you have Nicolas Cage, uh, who doesn't say one word in the film, which I thought was awesome. <laughs> uh, right. Thing. That, How many actors can do can actually do that? Can carry a film without ever speaking a word? You know, so it, it, it's a testament. I, I think that was the one thing me and my friends were were waiting on in this film was like if he's gonna say one word and he just did it and we were just like I'm okay with that. This is it makes <laughs> I mean this is this is awesome. It doesn't say one word. Well, and... in all fairness, go ahead. I was just gonna say in all fairness, he has a tool that not every actor has, which is cage rage. There it is. <laughs> He's got cage rage. And he has the most cage rage in this movie of any other. <laughs> right. I mean, yeah. I, I've seen him do it all. I mean, Gone in 60 Seconds, he was Ghost Rider. You know, he's done it all, man. And I, I feel like this one, this role was, was a good role for him. But all of you, I mean, you guys did an amazing job. I mean... We had the, you know, you played the sheriff, Beth. Um, tell me a little bit what drew you to the project. Well, Grant Kramer, Preston's <laughs> father right there. That's really the truth. Grant and I were in acting class together back in the day, and it was an extraordinary class. And I mean, should I drop a few names like Tom Selleck, uh, Patrick Swayze, Grant Kramer. Oh, man. And, and there were girls, too, but I don't remember any of them. <laughs> Tova Felcha. Yeah, no. Mark, I'm oh, yeah, Tova Felcha was a Tony Danza. And, yeah, uh, Joel Schumacher, the great director, was in Schumacher. class. I mean, it was pretty Gina Hecht. I'm just joking. I do remember the women too. <laughs> and but anyway, Grant Beth and I have been Grant friends. right before right before she launched her career. Yeah, it launched, the class really is the reason I have a career. That's the truth. It was, you know, I I a late starter. I didn't start until. Um, later I was a producer actually <laughs> and then I figured it was just as painful to be a producer as it would be to be an actor I might as well be an actor and do what I loved <laughs> but but anyway Grant and I've been friends and I just love him so much and um, we ran into each other at a party actually we had a reunion for the class and he mentioned that he was going to be calling me and I didn't really it wouldn't have mattered to tell the truth it wouldn't have mattered what he had invited me to do short of I mean, well, your son's there, so I won't say <laughs> there are, I have limits, but, <laughs> um, and he, the way he described the film to me before uh, was, you know, how it was going to be a lot of fun for guys like you. Yeah, and yeah. obviously he was 100% correct. And then it, the fact that it was Nick, Nick Cage too. I um, worked with Nick on Matchstick Men and uh, he actually is the guy that introduced me to James Franco, who's a dear friend who I've done probably 12 movies with. And um so it just all comes for full circle. It was like a family movie for me, really. I was so happy to, Grant and I are both, well, Grant's not technically from the South, but he has Southern roots. His father was from the South and an old North Carolina family. I grew up in North Carolina. So, you know, to go to Atlanta and you have relatives in Atlanta too, I think, don't you, Grant? Anyway. I, I don't, I have relatives in uh, Tennessee though. Tennessee. So anyway, um, that was what drew me to it but i must say i just had a blast doing it i have held a lot of shot shotguns in my life but never pointed at anyone as powerful and fabulous as nick cage i mean that was pretty cool to get to do that well well i have to say one thing is that um what, what beth isn't telling you is that she has a special skill of her own that that it can counter that can counteract rage cage and it's called pitching a fit 
<laughs> He's one of the few people that knows that. <laughs> oh, man. That's uh, exactly right. That's exactly Our teacher got a big kick out of me pitching fits. And I pitched one this afternoon. Not acting, <laughs> just being overwhelmed with everything. I pitched a good one. <laughs> My dog was going, huh? What's going on? <laughs> But anyway, we had a blast. And then to get to meet and work with David, I'm sorry I didn't get to work with you, Christian. I was like, not directly anyway. I know, I, I know. I, I thought but, for sure, I, I, th I had a feeling that we were going to have a scene. And for some reason, it, I, I, I was mistaken. I, we didn't end up having one, but that would have been fun. Well, you, as I told you when I met you, I think you're the coolest. And I was just so proud that you were in the movie. And Oh, come on. No, I mean it. And, uh, yeah, you're just There's awesome. No going on, so. You're just awesome. And David and I were fast friends uh, with him playing the deputy. I just loved having him as a sidekick. Yeah. So anyway. Your guy's was dynamic was like the best dynamic in the film. You guys had the best dynamic. And uh, I think it was Grant. I think Grant, you told me, or was it Dave, that you guys were like uh, actively rehearsing together, you know, outside of um, while we were working, right? Oh, yeah. That's right. I forgot about that. We got together and worked on the characters and the history and all of that. And it paid off because we were very comfortable with each other when we got there. And, right. and then we were doing, you know, um, our great director let us do a little improv here and there. And <laughs> we would start the scene before the cameras, before action and sort of have it going by the time, you know, they started shooting so we were already warmed up. And yeah, it was very affectionate. Thank you, Christian. That's sweet of you to say. But. Yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, one of the fun things about uh, Dave and Beth scenes is that um, when we were in the editing room, they they both they you know, they worked the chemistry out so well that it was like literally there was nothing to do. You know, there was no searching for takes or anything. It was just boom. It was right there, and it was it was you know a lot of the film needed a lot of you know, as low budget films do, when you don't, aren't able to shoot tons and tons of footage, footage, they need a lot of kind of searching and trying and tweaking. And, um, you know, it's nice to have those kind of anchor scenes where everything is working every time you go through, because at the beginning, you just don't think the movie's very good. You know what I mean? Right. <laughs> and kind of working it to make it, make it better. And, uh, but their scenes were always great. They were just like, like they just, we never had to do anything to them and there were these anchor scenes. Now we just have to bring the rest of the movie up to match it, you know, right. that's our job. Okay, thank you. <laughs> well, look, you know, I know uh, Beth said, you know, she's held a lot of shotguns in her in her career. Well, this is the first shotgun that was thrown to me by Beth. And like, what a dream <laughs> come true to be in a Nicolas Cage movie with Beth Grant and you're getting to hold a shotgun. And my character is this sort of happy-go-lucky deputy that just doesn't know what's going on and gets pulled into mayhem and craziness. And it was just, it was a, such a pleasure, a dream job to be on, really. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that was one thing I noticed about your character. Your character was like the the kind of innocent, you know, trying to go by the book. And, and Beth had a, an objective in the film that she had to kind of stick to. And she was kind of dragging you along with a lot of the stuff she was doing. And I, I really love that chemistry between you. You can really see it when watching the film that you guys, like you guys said, were rehearsing before, you know, shooting and all that. So, I mean, it was great chemistry in the film between you two. Well, I have to give Okay, some let's food. tell the truth. No. Yeah. I oh, left yeah, yeah. my husband. I'm actually in Hawaii. Yeah, so <laughs> in the other room. We love each other. It's just how it is. Sorry, guys. The hell with it. Let's come out. Tell yeah. the people what they want. What happens on set? You fall in love. You know what it is? So. <laughs> what are you going to do? You get thrown a shotgun and that's it. That's get it. Married yeah. the next day. Now, Christian, if you'd gotten you know, to me I, first, you know. Do I hear something about a shotgun <laughs> wedding in your future? Yeah, you do. <laughs> You know, it's you know traditional weddings have rings. These two have shotguns, so exactly. there it is. Uh, Christian, what was going on? Uh, thank God I didn't have a scene with her. <laughs> what was something that? What was uh, what drew you to this project, man? Man, Nick Cage haunted animatronics. I was just like, this is gonna be one one in a million. There hasn't been really any. You know, there's what was the other film called that I didn't even watch it, but there was a reason why I didn't watch it. Uh, Wait, Banana Split. Split. Was it? Yeah. Yeah. Like, you know, I thought that this was going to be the right off the bat after reading the script. I thought this was going to be the redemption film of that initial idea, because uh, I think the, the idea is super unique and it, it needed to be done. Once I saw, you know, Nick Cage and 
uh, attached to the film as well. I was like, okay, this is this is going to be that film. Uh, and then I just fell in love with it. I actually auditioned for uh, I auditioned initially for Terrell's role in the film, right? Uh, at, at uh, it, but he needed to be it. He he was he was the guy to play Bobby. Uh, and then I ended up uh, reading again for Aaron, and then uh, and then I got cast as Aaron. Oh man! I mean, truthfully, just to be totally honest, like we auditioned all the guys for Bobby, and then we basically wow, Grant. And then we basically just took the people, the, the guys that we liked the most, and we said, okay, where would they fit the best? And like uh, you could have very easily been either character, but Terrell was really only really right for Bobby. So right. there we went. There it is. That thing was, was great because the group of, your guys' group was so good and you played off each other so well. And the comedy between you all was was fantastic. And just, all right, Terrell and Kayla, they're going to go in and they're going to do their thing. <laughs> and it's it's going to go into murder and mayhem very, very quickly. The plan goes sideways almost immediately. <laughs> right. Great. I mean, I mean right. That, that's what I love about that, too. I mean, you know, you have you have a couple of them that are like, eh, I don't know if I want to do this, you know, like, let's let's not do this. But then you have a couple of them like, no, nah, let's, let's let's go in. We got to do this, you know, and. Uh, me personally, I was, I was with the group, like, let's not do this. Let's, let's go somewhere else. You know, it was like, you know, uh, Nick Cage has it covered in there. I, I think we're good. Um, yeah. but I, I really did, uh, love the chemistry between the group, uh, because, you know, you, you had some that were, that were for the plan. They were like, look, we're going full force. We're not backing out. And then you had some that were like, we're for the plan, but I think we're taking it a little too far. Like, do we go for it? Do we not? And right. that chemistry was really good. Um, and, and I really enjoyed all, watching all of them one by one uh, go in and, and see what happens to them. Uh, David, what, what was the reason that drew you to the project, man? Uh, everything. Everything everybody else said. I, I'm like going, you know, obviously Nicolas Cage, getting to work with Beth was, was sort of a dream come true. And, and Emily Tosta, who I've seen with, was awesome. Grant was such a champion for me for the role, which was amazing. So, yeah, I mean, it's that crazy thing where you get to be on a, on a film set and you get to be in the film and you become friends with all of these people. It's one of those things where, you know, you hear about them. You're like, how does everybody stay friends? And like Beth was so kind, as, as Christian was saying, you know, we had a scene and then we had a week off and Beth invited me to her home. She and her husband made me lunch. Like it was such, you know, the dream come true of like, I'm friends with the actors I'm working with. I'm learning and working with such amazing, amazing talent that you just steal from the greats. That's the that's the great thing about working on something like this. So that's all of it that drew me to it. I mean, like I say, man, I mean, I think when this film started, uh, I, I was like, okay, something fishy is going on here. Uh, something is like not right. I, I, feel, I feel something that, uh, you know, something's not right. And when you dive deeper into film, you, you know, you, you figure it out and you start piecing the puzzle together. Um, I, I really love the direction that you took uh, everyone's character uh, overall because uh, it, it really, it kind of all comes uh, down to like, okay, this story and this story, they're coming together and we find out uh, what, what the overall, what's going on and whatnot. Um, I, I really love the, the design of the place too. Um, you know, you think of a place like this, you think the first thing that comes to your head is the place that scares me because of films like this is Chuck E. Cheese. Cause I feel like they're going to come to life and, and do the same thing to me. Um, so, so seeing that kind of environment for everybody, uh, is really, uh, it's really terrifying because, you know, you see a lot of animatronics, not only at, at places like that, but you know, you're talking like theme parks and whatnot. And the first thing when I was little that always came to my head is these guys are going to come to life and scare the crap out of me. Um, and and you guys <laughs> sold that with this film so well. Uh, well, let's face it. Chuck E. Cheese is a hellhole. Oh, yeah. And we've, we've known this for a long time. <laughs> that was, You know what? That was one of the things I liked right away. Right, Grant? <laughs> because I hated Chuck E. Cheese when I took my nieces and then later my daughter. I thought... What kind of place is this? <laughs> the animals are so bizarre. I'm going to get sued for talking about What this. was worse between <laughs> Chokefish Pizza and Chuck E. Cheese? Oh, God. And then can you imagine the germs in that place? And that, oh. And there was some drunk woman up there dancing with the rat. I mean, I, I was very pleased. <laughs> <laughs> 
in our movie. A dancing rat. <laughs> <laughs> a dancing rat. <laughs> uh, I don't know when Chuck E. Cheese as a kid. I thought it was. I thought it was great. I don't know about you, Christian. Did you go as a kid? <laughs> I went a couple of times, but I think you know you realize pretty quickly that you're not going to go back to this place. Right, right. <laughs> I had my mindset on one thing, and I was getting tickets so I can get the big prize. Right, right. Yeah, exactly. I don't think I was anywhere near the animatronics. I was like, okay, that's that's creepy, but let's get some tickets. Yeah, let's get right. the tickets. Even if I get the, even if I get some like Tootsie Rolls, you know, that's a score for me, you know. Exactly. Oh, Tootsie Rolls. He knows. He knows. Oh, now you just put that taste in my mouth. Now I need a Tootsie Roll. <laughs> Grant, I have to talk to you, man, because you got a cameo in the film. Hey, yes, I do. Uh, I, and me and my friends, we were watching the film and we came up with some fan theories around your, your character. Okay. Mm. So what happened was, uh, Mike from Killer Clowns just couldn't take it anymore. <laughs> so he went to run w Willy's Wonderland and that's what drove him to do what he did. Uh, oh, that's hilarious. That, that that's was one fan theory we came down with, man. You're basically marrying the, the like one of the great cult movies with the new cult movie. Yeah. Oh, that's really interesting. It's one world, man. The so grand. You know, maybe the done. next Willy's Wonderland should be the janitor battling a bunch of killer clowns. Oof. The crossover. <laughs> you know what? Forget Godzilla versus Kong. I want that film right there. <laughs> right. You give me that film, oh, and I want to see. What'd you say, Dave? Uh, we'll call it the Kramerverse. There you go. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> the Kramerverse. You know, universes a... are popping big time right now. So, you know. There were a couple other theories, that, and I think me and Grant were talking about this, that I heard randomly that I was like, wait a second. that Was that the theory? Or was that the actual theory? Of the... There was... Grant, what was that one I told you about? My friend thought that, okay, so there's the, the boy in the beginning of the film, which ends up getting murdered, which Grant's wife would had the cameo and played the right. mother my friend said that that boy he thought was nicholas cage in the future that had grown up that wait. came back through town to get his revenge so on wait a second you're talking about the, the very opening of the movie yeah the the um there was the a, one there that, was... the one that's the that 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 my wife olga is the mama sorry no no that's emily uh there was another that's emily the, yeah, You're there was talking another about the scene. one that Willie's, that Willie's, when when I put the mask on and then Willie's. That bit, Willie's yeah, that like bit his shoulder or something. And I was like, wait, that, so that sounded like that could have been a really interesting, you know. Good theory right Plot there. for the film. Yeah. You I, know, that's that's true. And that is a uh, a pretty interesting take on it all, right? Did right. you hear that, Bev? Trying to figure it out. Um, you, remember, you remember there's the scene when... Um, when the scenes that that uh, where I where they show me putting the the Willie's thing on before you know when when um, it was the when flashback Emily when they're telling giving, the story. It's giving the whole backstory. Yeah, and okay. she's talking about the most sadistic group of killers led by you know my character. Um, and then yeah. uh, there's a birthday party, and I put the thing on, and I go over, and then they're singing happy birthday, and Willie's goes down and bites the kid on the neck. Yes. You're saying, well, what if that was Nicolas Cage, but he didn't, but he survived, and now he's come back to get his revenge years oh, years later. Oh, well, well. I got a couple of fan theories I want to hear all your thoughts about because I, I you know. Was... Here's the good news: is there really wasn't a lot of backstory, right? Um, uh, you know, other than the fact that you know, the only backstory really that wasn't in, written in the original script was the opening scene being Liv, which was just an idea that I came up with right um you know to give it that bookend thing that she was the surviving little girl from that but right. um uh i just totally lost my <laughs> lost my train of oh i was gonna say here was a there was a movie that beth was in was called no country for for, for old men great oh. film. love that film and you know there was a there was a most amazing interview I saw with with the uh, with the Cohen brothers afterwards where they were going like there's so many theories and da 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 and were, were you trying were you going for this with the da da were you going for that you're going for this and the Cohen brothers looked at him and go that's so cool that you're get reading all that stuff into it they're like we didn't go for anything at all we read the book we thought whoa this is pretty cool we wrote the script of the book and we shot the movie 
<laughs> like there was like not one thing that you're saying but we're so glad you got i all mean <laughs> i was the guy right. after watching this film that that probably went on youtube went on reddit to see like what people thought about the film some f interesting fan theory i want to i want to get your thoughts on a few of these this one's my favorite one uh nicholas cage's character is actually death and he came to willie's wonderland to collect the souls of the suicide pact mm. you know yeah, okay these are all really cool, really cool sequel ideas. So I'm taking note, but uh, <laughs> uh, I hadn't thought of that one though. That's pretty cool though. That was one one that I that I heard, and I was like, "Well, that makes sense." He doesn't say a word in the film. He's not phased by people getting killed, and he's not scared of a shotgun to the face. So he's got to be something like that, you know? It's like he's coming to get the souls of the Suicide Pact. Like that. That was probably the one that made the most sense to me. I was like that. Would be cool if they if they did that. Um, I'm not inviting him over to dinner. That's that. <laughs> He's a reaper. He's a reaper. Don't fear the reaper, man. That's it. Don't fear the reaper. You know. Um, <laughs> another one someone brought up on Reddit was uh, that he might have been a serial killer who previously worked at Willie's, uh, but uh, he wasn't a big fan of the whole suicide cult kind of thing, so he ended up leaving... <laughs> Uh, but then uh, he came back, uh, and that's why he has the connection to the pinball machine because he used to work there, and and you know he he probably played a lot of pinball, and he came back to kind of put everyone out of their uh, you know out of their misery because he found out what had happened. Ooh, I mean him being a serial killer too. I mean that's another good one. So. Um, yeah, never thought about that one either. That and then was... Emily left with him. Yeah, <laughs> you know. I, I, the reason why I don't really go, but like he's, he's, if you actually watch the movie, he's a very, you know, he's almost kind of like a Billy Jack, you know, who Billy Jack is right. kind of character. You know what I mean? He, he like just kind of wants to do his thing and be left alone. But, you know, you can see that when you mess with them, like one of my favorite beats of Nick's is during the Aussie fight, the, uh, the Aussie fight, the very beginning. Right. Right. You know, because he's just trying to sweep the floor. He just wants to do his job. He's going to ignore Ozzy, you know, all the way through. And then Ozzy starts to fight and you see it. He's still expressionless. He's just kind of parrying the blows. And then Ozzy gets through and cuts him. And he does, he does one of these little, you know, Bruce Lee from Enter the Dragons yep. with the blood. And then you see him go <laughs> like... All right, baby, it's on, right? It's go time. And you see that, like, there's a part of him that loves to rumble, you know what I mean? And that's, that's right. you know, that's the part that you just woke up, right? Is yeah. that part that just loves to rumble. And He's is like a shark. He's like a shark. Once there's blood yeah. in the water, it's a frenzy, so. Even if it's his own. <laughs> I mean, it, it's just like with this film, it, it, it had a formula that I loved. It was, you know... Uh, his tires are getting slashed, and he's like, "All right, I need the money to fix the tires. Let's let's you know." They offer him the job. It was uh, uh, getting a kill, drinking a soda pop, playing pinball. I love that. That is just uh, I don't know how you guys came up with that idea, but it, it it was confusing like the first two times. I'm like, "Is he gonna go drink a a soda pop again?" And then like I started, I'm like, "Okay, this is just getting funny." Well, this is if you really want to know the the, the truth. The, you know, I, I actually did a couple of rewrites on the script, right? right? And the writer came up with a really fun script, but it was a little bit, you know, I would say it, it lacks cohesiveness, you know what I mean? And so in the script from time to time, his watch would be, and he would take a drink. There was no pinball machine. Uh, you know, it would, it was just very random. You know what I mean? There was no, it was like, why is he doing this? this thing? And the way that, I think it's like I try to find order in chaos, right? So I was trying to take his interesting idea and what he'd written, but to give it something that had a little bit more cohesiveness and context. Right. And I just said, like, what would kind of make sense with the guy that, that incessantly cleans? Like, what's the first thing you think of when somebody incessantly cleans? You think OCD. Right. Right. And what's something else that's a tr tr that, so I said, what are other traits of OCD? So I basically just he was ne he wasn't anything really, except just kind of a strange guy that 
drank soda pops every once in a while and didn't really express it. So I wanted to take those things and actually give it a trackable psychology. Right. And so I said, every hour on the hour, he does da, 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 da. You know what I mean? No matter what's and happening. The pinball machine was basically, it was between Christmas and New Year's of 2019. And I had like a horrendous fever. I don't know if I had early COVID before to be knew it. I thought I had the flu. But I had about 104 temperature and I was trying to, 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 you know, laying on my couch, you know, for two weeks, trying to do the rewrite of the script before I had to hop on an airplane to Atlanta in a week. Right. And uh, and I was trying to fix that area. And for some reason, I just started hearing Pinball Wizard in my head. <laughs> I, you yeah. know what? You bring that song up, and I was waiting for that song to come. I was like, they're going to play Pinball Wizard. They well, we to. had a, a Pinball Wizard. We had all the way through the movie, uh, all the way through the editing of the movie. It was on that scene, right? right. It was the, the, the final version of it, right? When he does his big, which was all Nick, by the way, right? right? I mean, I wrote that each, you know, first he finds it, and then, you know, all that was exactly how it was written. And then the end, I just had, he's really getting into it. But Nick is a massive Prince fan. And he went back home and watched some videos and came to work the next day and channeled Prince. He had an entire Corey after that. We were just all going, whoa. It was I mean, great. That's the way it's supposed to be, right, guys? I mean, you know, you, 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 you put something on the page, but then you know, hopefully it gives the actors inspiration and they come and, and bring that much more, that much more to it. So. But that's but we, we we couldn't afford it was the was the bottom line, yeah. and our composer who's just very talented who, um, uh, you know, we couldn't afford that, and then we tried ten other songs and and we thought we wanted something kind of like kind of like that song Hero, you know, that it was used in Footloose and everything. Right. We couldn't get that. We wanted something very eighties and very upbeat, you know, kind of like the before the Rocky song. Yeah. And. Uh, we just tried everything and we could, and we just couldn't believe the prices we kept on getting thrown at us for how much the song. Is. And so we focused on one song we were going to pay for, which was Freebird. And I'm glad you um, put that in. Cause now this is now I, devil's rejects was my favorite movie ending of all time. And now this is my favorite movie ending of all time because of that song. I yeah. love it. And then if you, and then, you know, I actually wrote a, wrote a song. The, the other song that's in the movie is uh, Just the Way I Roll, which is like in the end credits, the very right. last song. And uh, and then the composer woke up. One morning I woke up and I had a, a little uh, email with a, with a song in it. And he said, dude, I was just screwing around last night. What do you think of this? And I said, it's great. But he was being really chill, right? He was kind of like, well, these well. I said, no, no. I think it's fucking awesome, but I want you to go back before I send it to anybody. I want you to go back and I want you to like sing this to like a hundred thousand people, you know, at the Coliseum with their lighters on, right? right. So he came back and he did that, and I sent everybody. But that, that's it. We're done. <laughs> so <laughs> I mean, so he wrote it for the movie just to, like overnight, just because we were so frustrated. We tried to get fifty songs. The one we wanted the most was Pinball Wizard, of course, but I gotta, I, I gotta, I gotta say the music in this film too. I mean, I had myself singing head, shoulders, knees, and toes after I was done with this film, uh, <laughs> especially when he he kicks the jukebox and he's ready to go, and I'm like, that is legit right there. I love that. <laughs> I'm sorry to interrupt, but I gotta, I gotta no! go. Oh. I, got, I got lines to learn. Beth, uh, we want to thank you for being on the show, and you did an amazing, phenomenal job in this film, and we can't wait to see you in anything in the future. So uh, thank oh, you thank so you much for your time. So great to be such an enthusiast. Well, just let me get my next film off the ground, and you'll see you'll see Beth in that. Because Beth is back. Anything I can cast her in, she's going to be well, cast. Ever, anything ever. She'll, anything she'll say yes to me on. You bet. You always and forever, Grant. I, <laughs> I love you, you sweetie. Take care. Bye, Beth. Bye. Bye. Uh, David and Christian, uh, one of my favorite things hearing behind the scenes of, of most movies is uh, on, fun on set, uh, set stories. Uh, did you guys have any good fun set stories that you want to share? Dave? Sure. Well, uh, you know, <laughs> again, we, we talk about, you know, getting to work with, uh, with, Nick, with Nick Cage and it was cool. So I, I have a scene with him and I have to tie him up and he's the coolest guy. So he's just super cool. He's super chill. He's such a collaborative guy to work with. But, you know, yeah, I had this prop where it was like a zip tie, but it was a prop zip tie and I got to tie him up. And 
unfortunately, you know, you're going through the scene. You don't want to screw up the scene. You don't want to slow it down by any, by any count. And it just wasn't going around his wrist and I couldn't get it. And he's just such a cool professional guy. He's just grabbing it. He's making it look like he's getting zip tied. So, I mean, that's my big set story of just, he's, he's awesome. And then he's a big, big fan of uh, Godzilla, I found out. So we were chatting throughout the whole thing about old monster movies and Godzilla. So he is such a fan of the genre while he's doing the genre. It was it was like a dream come true. It really was. And then Christian and I, we didn't meet until I think the end. You flew back to, to hang out for the cast party, right? Right. We Yeah, we, we met like around probably halfway through, right? Like yeah. what uh, I think we met first at the um, at the trailer park. That's I think that's right. where we yeah. uh, but then, yeah, we didn't we didn't really have anything together, um, but some like interacting uh, or some uh, uh, overlapping days where we got to hang out. Yeah, I remember I remember watching uh, watching you do the scene where you were getting attacked from inside the car when we were shooting inside the warehouse. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so good. I actually have a, uh, another Nicolas Cage moment, which is really funny and it's surreal at the time, you know, having grown up watching his films. Right. Um, I was I think it was the, the day the, the day that we shot me being killed off and I was just lying there in a pool of blood and I was there for um, uh, continuity shots too. So I was there pretty much for like two or three hours straight, just lying for the continuity right. in the back. And I remember when, it, when they were doing his, his coverage and stuff, he like saw me lying there and he came up to me and he was like, Oh man, they're killing you off today. Huh? And I was just <laughs> like, I was like, yeah, this is it for me. And he's like, yeah, it's a lot of blood. And I was like, it's all my blood. <laughs> it's all over the floor. But just, yeah, there's like some like funny moments like that. Um, what would be really interesting for you to, honestly, this was one of my favorite things too, is like when you're working on a film and or when you're watching a film, you always imagine it, you know, you imagine um, the, uh, the uh, what's it called? The environment being a certain way when you're watching it. Like, oh yeah, okay, I could, right. I, I, I'm, I'm imagining what the building of Willie's looks like. Right. But when you, when we're getting there and like as actors, obviously this is, you know, part of the gig, but when you're getting there and you walk into this warehouse, everything, everything in the film is just manufactured, uh, you know, yeah, yeah. just little mini sets inside this massive warehouse and like getting to walk through it is surreal. Cause you're like, Oh wow. Okay. This is where we're shooting, you know, um, yeah. like the kitchen scene. And it's like this little box that they made with drywall, like holding, you know, holding it all together. But when you walk in there, you feel like you're in a real kitchen and you're like, wait, right. the sink doesn't work. But it's just funny being like in those environments where it's it's so it's so manufactured that you feel like you're a part of the funny thing is, is the sink doesn't work. But the day that you have to do the scene where you turn it on. It works. It works. (laughs) Like everything works, you know, like the, the, the one of the miracles of movie making. Right. Is that is that like these guys the, I mean, the unsung heroes of movie making are, you know, um, these construction guys and these and the guys that make everything that are, is, are sitting there. I mean, like watching when I arrived, there was like nothing there. And then to like you show up the next day and there's like, you know, frames and then there's floors and right. then and then anything that you tell them that you want, it just like appears and like there's that that sink that's not even a real sink. Right. Oh, tomorrow we're shooting the, you know, <laughs> the sink on, and somehow they bring in a pump and a generator, whatever it is, and they make the, and it not only goes on, but it goes on it, thing shakes and right. Yeah. I mean, they just, it's, it's, it's magic what they can do uh, to make these things just come to life right when you need them. And um, it's, it just never ceases to blow me away. I mean, and we I, had such yeah. a cool crew and like an enthusiastic crew and they loved the genre and they were having as much fun doing all that stuff as we were, you know, Christian, I'm sure you feel the same way. You know, we walk on and it, it is like movie magic because you you just show up and everything is done and you're walking into Willie's and you're seeing it for the first time. And it's it's incredible. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, there's so much about this film that it's just like I said, from start to finish, I mean, there's characters that, of course, you're gonna, you're, gonna, you're, you know, you're gonna follow their story and feel for them. Uh, you mentioned, of course, the the whole design of the place. I mean, I, I loved the the aesthetics of it and each themed room. Uh, I, I would say one of the scariest scenes was when they were getting chased in the in the maze by the uh, was it the uh, the ballerina 
the 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 Bella the Jonathan Rachel. character. Yeah, it and they were getting or chased. Dan, Dan, Jonathan played Dan. Yeah, that's yeah. It, it's it's just a. It, it was just terrifying to put yourself in this scenario, which which got me thinking. Uh, obviously, this was something I was I was gonna ask. How do you guys think you would survive in a real life Willy's Wonderland scenario? Grant? <laughs> oh, oh man. Grant. Uh, well, I'll go last. Christian, why don't you start? Right, I'm a, I'm 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 pretty much a, as real as it gets on the survivalist spectrum. So I feel like I would be fighting tooth and nail in there to, to try and survive every last uh, every last breath. <laughs> every last breath, I'd be I'd be going toe to toe with every animatronic. But yeah, like. I guess I guess if that's not even uh, I don't know when I, now that I think about it because you know when you get put in a situation like something you know in the paranormals I feel like that shifts your perspective of what what am I surviving right now right. <laughs> you know because everything that you would anticipate to have to survive in life I don't think would be a, a killer animatronic yeah so I feel like I feel like that might change if I was ever put in that situation I probably would you know absolutely poop my pants but. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I feel like I would I would fight to for about an hour and then just give up. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> what about you, Dave? Oh, I get killed in the first five minutes. Like my character <laughs> uh, way longer than I I would have I would have been like, what's happened? Boom, head gone, like done. So that's that's that'd be my reality. <laughs> you walk in there, Dave, you'd walk in there and be like, Hey, I thought you guys were closed. <laughs> <laughs> gone. Yes. <Yeah>, so. Gone. <laughs> Next is cut up. Yep. Grant, what about you, man? I, I think I probably would have, uh, like, found, you know, like, the closet, like, the, the you know, the janitor's closet or something like that, and, like, kind of lock. Yeah, I don't think I would have tried to fight him. <laughs> I don't think, I think I'd have much chance. I think my best yeah. chance would be to find something I could barricade. Holy Toledo? I just saw, a, I just saw like, a rat run around with... Uh -oh. <laughs> I, I think I would find a, uh, a, a safe, what I thought would be like a safe place, you know, like the closet or something and try to barricade myself in. Right. Um, of course, you know, thinking it through, I probably wouldn't be much food, any place to go to the bathroom and like, who knows what somebody's gonna, you know, and who knows if the people that come the next morning, what they do to you if they find you still alive, right? With the janitor's case, they just kind of went, but if they find some guy like me cowering in the closet, <laughs> they might just hit me over the head and feed, it, feed me to him. <laughs> yeah. Man, I, I think I've seen so many horror movies. Uh, just watching The Walking Dead alone, I mean, I would have to try to make a barbed wire baseball bat. You know, that's just, that's the go-to weapon. I got to go full Negan on on these guys. And, and <laughs> as scared as I would be, I got to, like, go and show them no fear. Like, listen, I'm terrified, but I'm not dying today. This is not how I go out. So, yeah, I got all of you. Let's let's just let's all group up and let's just go in there and take it head on. Thanks, because I'll need the help. Um, <laughs> I'll make sure you survive ten minutes instead of five. That's the we last. are Yeah, there it is, yeah, right oh, there. Yeah. Uh, you know, as a as a janitor, I am a janitor in real life, and watching Nick Cage clean this place spotless, um, I I was just impressed. And, and that's only something a janitor would notice in, a, in this kind of film, um, because this place was was so dirty that if it was me in real life, I'd look, I take one look at this place and go, I'm not doing this. Um, yeah. But I, I was just impressed of of just how much he would go into like you know cleaning, and then all of a sudden something would happen, and then he wouldn't let it phase. And like you said, he wouldn't let it phase him in the beginning, and then he'd go back to doing what he was doing, and he was just motivated to get this place clean and ready to go. And they every you know everyone lost faith in him. They they were obviously he was just kind of going in there for a sacrifice, but they lost faith in him. They didn't think he was gonna do it. And at the end of the at the end of the movie, he was just like, "I'll have my keys, please," and drove off to, <laughs> drove off to Freebird. And I like I said that ending alone. I mean I I'm a huge I, I love that song so much. And like I said, Devil's Rejects, I think held the position of having the best movie ending. And then. Sammy was watching and he was a little bit ahead of me and he goes, Oh my God, you're going to love the ending. And then all of a sudden I hear Freebird start and I'm like, they did not just do that right now. And <laughs> do you know, like, listen, you know, just because like I said, you know, we were, we were a low budget movie. Right. So we just didn't have a lot. We didn't have a lot of money for getting songs, but, uh, 
Um, I must have put 20, 30, 40 different songs, you know, to try to, you know, just trying to find something that was affordable that would be even close to what Freebird was in that scene. Right. And uh, nothing, nothing, like every single time it seemed just like, like a, a limp dish rag laying there compared to Freebird. Freebird, like, and then so finally, the fortunately, <laughs> our studio agreed and said, we'll write the check for Freebird. Nice. And, you know, like, because even they said, we kept on saying, well, what do you, you know, we hate it. What do you think of this? You know, do you, and we kind of thought at some point they would just throw in the towel. But no, they they just kept on going, no, either keep searching. Keep searching. It's got to be as good as that. You showed us Freebird. And <laughs> that was just no replacement. Yeah. You know, as much as Pinball Wizard was, felt like the, uh, it was the the perfect song for the pinball machine. Like when it came to the two of those, we could replace the pinball song, but we couldn't replace Freebird. It just, something about it just, there's something about that song. It's just so iconic too. It, it, it invokes this feeling in you, right? When you see it just, live, it's the 20 minute guitar solo, man. <laughs> yeah. I love, I love, I think that's hands down. It's between that and Stairway to Heaven that has the best guitar solo of all time, in my opinion. Oh. It, they're just so freaking amazing. Um, Christian, I, I want to touch a little bit about um, how, how was the chemistry between you and the group uh, on, on, on set? I mean, you guys, obviously, you could see the relationship that even going into this, you know, this this place, you, you some were hesitant, some were not. Some weren't on the same page. Some, you know, were just full force. What was the chemistry like uh, behind the scenes to prepare you to to play this role? Uh, it was really interesting. And we spent a lot of time together. The, the group spent a lot of time together uh, outside of filming. All of our days off, we pretty much all spent time together. I actually was living with Kaylee and Kai for the duration of the film. Um, and I feel like having gone over the script as many times as we did on our own time, we were and knowing who we were outside of the film, we were really, really able to um, create that dynamic on and off set. So right. me and Kyle were always getting on each other's nerves because we just, we just were, were you know, kind of embodied that offset and we, and we fed into it a little bit more to see like, you know, pushing each other's buttons to see where we could get. And it kind of created that cool little friend dynamic with me and uh, with me and Kai. Um, everyone was really awesome. Like, that that was hands down the best ensemble I've ever been a part of. Yeah, with friends um, like you, if I'm Kai, I say with friends like you, who needs uh, enemies, right? <laughs> Pour gasoline on your gasoline. <laughs> right. That yeah. That. <laughs> if, no, if, truthfully, if, I, we just love the relationship that um, that uh, you that you brought with you know with Kai. It really showed. You know, it was really like that kind of like big brother constantly haranguing his little brother kind of relationship. Right. Right, right. Um, Dave. The dynamic was on. Sorry, I was just going to say, the dynamic with you and Guy is one of my favorite. When he tries to kick in the door and you're like, it's open. And it's just, like, <laughs> you're just so cool. And he's just so forlorn in love with uh, with Liv. And it's just like, come on, Guy. You're, you're like the only yeah. voice of reason in this whole thing. So, yeah, exactly. It's great. Yeah, no, that, that was one of my favorite scenes too. Yep. Yeah, I mean, uh, Dave, I mean, you as obviously, uh, you know, you're opposite of Beth in this film. Uh, yep. You know, you're, you're really, you're by the book. You're trying to just, you know, do your job, kind of, you know, work your nine to five and go home and, you know, really just try to do everything by the book. Uh, what did you find the most difficult of, about playing a uh, good cop uh, working with bad cop? To be honest, I mean, working with Beth was, it just felt so sort of easy and natural that it, it was sort of easy to be good cop. You know, it's, it's that thing of like, you know what's going to happen, but your character doesn't know what's going to happen, right. right? So you have to play it like, I don't really believe in all this paranormal sort of spooky, whatever she says is actually going on, but she's dead serious in it. And and then, you know, just getting uh, getting killed by a, by a giant turtle. That's, that's <laughs> maybe the hardest thing I had to do on the movie, so... 
Dude, I, I, I mean the kills were great in here, and and one of one YouTuber I'm waiting to do a, a, to see him do a kill count is, is Dead Meat James on on YouTube, uh, who, who who's famous for doing kill. I can't wait to see his kill count for this, and uh, I, I really can't <laughs> I really can't wait to see. What does the, he do? How does he do it? So I I don't know if you he know this, but he makes like a little video of like all the deaths in the movie. He actually did one for Killer Clowns. Really? Yeah, and that's the that's the video that actually took him off right there. Um, he is a, a YouTuber who basically will watch the entire film, take notes as to what who gets killed and whatnot. Re pretty much reviews the movie and uh, and 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 kill counts the entire movie from start to finish. Um, and he is just so good at what he does, and he's always promoting, you know. Just because I'm showing you a lot of what the movie is doesn't mean I don't want you to watch it. Please go support everyone who makes these films. I want everyone to watch these films. Um, and he is just so good. So I cannot wait to see him do a kill count on this film because this film, I mean, the, the kills were just so brutal and whatnot. And I, I think that was one thing that, as a horror fan, you look forward to in a, in a horror film. So congrats on the kills, man. They were just amazing. <laughs> awesome. Grant, you can correct me, but I don't know if Evan actually got killed. He definitely got hurt, but uh, something tells me he may come back uh, in, in the sequel. That's just my he got, he got, right you know, there. Truthfully, he got chewed up pretty well, um, but, uh, you know, Tito wasn't actually able to finish the job because, you know, by the time, by the time, uh, you know, he'd taken a couple of bites off the burger. <laughs> He got, you know, his cojones, you know, pounded in pretty good. So, yeah. you know, theoretically, <laughs> Evan, you know, deputy or state trooper Evan could could for sure come back. I um, am. By the way, I just want to say one thing about uh, about Dave playing that part. Um, and you, it's you don't really see this because he does such a good job with it, but. Um, you know, being an actor myself, when I'm, you know, being in the bit, I'm, you know, I'm was first an actor and, you know, always an actor. And, and uh, you know, now that I wear multiple hats, you know, when I'm working on a script or putting something together, you know, there's sometimes a character that you kind of go, oh, man, this is this is a tough one. Like, it's it's tough for an actor to find, um, you know, to, to find his footing in it. You know what I mean? Right. Um, you know, Beth has got has got the character that's that's much more cleanly drawn. You know what I mean? Yeah. And um, the other actors that came in, you know, they kind of fell victim to, to read for it. They they kind of fell victim to exactly that, just trying to like kind of play the beats, but not being able to really find their way in and find the comedy of it and everything. And Dave just, uh, you know, um, you know, he he brought that that comedic sense to it you know, filling it out when he was doing his audition. And right. then by working with Beth and things like that, uh, you know, he, he, you call those kind of characters sometimes thankless characters, right? Yeah. You know, because they don't, they're kind of there and they're kind of a foil for another character, but they don't have that strong intention. You know, he says it right off the bat. It's like, you know, so why'd you even have to bring me? <laughs> and well, because we need to get, have somebody be out to play off of Beth and fill it. Right. And, uh, and so you're just hoping to find somebody like Dave that brings it to life and and puts in and in, in looks at it and fills in all the gaps himself and creates a dynamic with the other actor. And in Dave's case, brings that wonderful sense of almost like Mr. Smith goes to Washington kind of ah shucks this to it all and, and that wonderful humor, you know. Right. Thank you, Grant. Thank you. That means a lot. A, a character I need to bring up who is also one of the heart of the films that we've not touched on yet is um, Emily's character, Liv. Um, you know, I, everyone I'm a, everyone had an interaction with her in this film. And uh, I, I first saw her uh, in a show that I love and watch. Uh, it's a spinoff of Sons of Anarchy, The Mayans MC. Um, she's terrific in that show. She's actually, she just debuted in uh, the, the latest season and I just saw her in there and uh, she's a very talented actress um now christian you got to work really close with uh with emily's character as well uh, as you know being part of that group how, how was that working with her obviously she's kind of like the leader she's kind of telling everyone this is what we need to do this needs to happen uh what, what was it like working with her man yeah she was amazing uh and heavily respected on and off camera 
um, super, super good hearted person. And I think that's like one of the, one of the, you know, main things to look for when you're getting to work with in an ensemble is that everyone's like, you know, coming at this from, you know, um, a, a good place and, and everyone, you know, um, is just as excited about the project as you are. And, and she was just gung ho right off the bat. And that kind of got everybody, uh, really together and motivated as well. Right. Um, yeah, on set was amazing. She's extremely dedicated to her craft. Um, and um, yeah, like just nothing but good things to say about Emily. Yeah. And Dave, I know you, you know gotta... one thing one thing about Emily, Anthony, yeah, is that you know, like when I first saw her, I was sent the a tape of her from Mayans, right? Right. And uh, and I hadn't really watched the show. I'd watched some Sons of Anarchy, but in the tape, you know, she's hopping in the front of a trucker's cab. Right. You know, and the she got you know she's a dirty little girl, right? Right. You know, I know, I know exactly <laughs> what episode you're talking about. I just I just binge watched it all to get ready for season three. Yeah, and uh, but the amazing thing about Emily when you meet her is is just what Christian says, right? And she's just she's so so um uh oh you know I totally forgot I have a uh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I'm just going to tell him I'm going to postpone till next week. I take a guitar lesson every at seven o'clock every Wednesday night okay. in, uh, with a guy in New Zealand. So I'm just going to let him know super fast that uh, I'm stuck doing an interview with his push till next week. But, um, but uh, she's just so professional, so sweet. I mean, like you can't picture a bad word coming out of her mouth. Yeah. She's so nice. Like, so like, it, it, it blows me away that she, like what she did to actually get that part on my ends because, yeah. you know what I mean? She's just like the the nicest, sweetest person you'd ever want to meet. I mean, you, I mean, like I said, you see her on my ends and she's like super aggressive, obviously with the situation she's in. And then you see her in this film, uh, you know, seeing the story in the very beginning of her as a little girl obviously and then you know coming full circle with you know with Beth's character as well uh you know she taking her in to take care of her you know she she felt bad after all these years she she wanted to watch over her she wanted to protect her um and she just wanted to keep her out of harm's way but as rebellious and defiant as she is she just is like no I got to burn this place down I got to get redemption for my parents like this place needs to yeah. go and just to see her play the two roles like She's super talented. Like she plays someone completely different in this film than she does on on Mayans. It's not even the same person at that point. No, which... no, not not at all. Yeah. And then the and then the real person is just this little like almost like angelic type of person, right? <laughs> yeah. Um. Hey, I'll be right back. I'm just gonna yeah, yeah. go on to Scott and let this guy know. If you guys talk to the guys for just a second, I'll be right back. Go ahead, Dave. You actually yeah. you got to do a couple scenes with her as well, correct? I did, yeah, and I'll, I'll echo what everybody's saying. Emily, as a person, is just one of the loveliest people you'll ever get to work with and meet with and be with, and she is so, so talented. And, you know, you know, Grant was sort of saying a little bit, you know, my character, yeah, he's sort of on the page is one thing, but, you know, as an actor, Christian, I'm sure you'll, you'll agree with this, you mm -hmm. have to sort of build an arc, not over just the course of the movie, but over the course of a scene right. of... Where your where your character starts with at the beginning of the movie or a scene is got to be different than where he ends up. And my guy, you know, in all my scenes with uh, with Beth, really start off happy go lucky, not sure what she's talking about, to being convinced that this is real, this is happening, and making sort of in a, a bad decision in that okay, I'm going to go along with what the sheriff of this town is saying, leave Nick's character of the janitor in there to be killed for the betterment of myself, the town, my family, you know, I have a wife and a kid, so I'm making right. these decisions. And then it's Emily's sort of speech in our, in our scene together that really convinces me that, yeah, you know, we got to change this and turn this around. I, you know, I'll tell you a funny story. You know, the, we did a lot of what was written in the script, but uh, our, our director, Kevin Lewis, who's fantastic, he would, you know, say, all right, we got enough of what's in the script. Let's Let's improvise. Let's try some things. But, you know, with my Emily's scene and my scene, he came to us. He goes, I had a dream last night. And I've rewritten sort of this monologue for this scene. And he sort of handed it to us. He goes, do the monologue, improvise through it, do what you want to do. So he really gave us free reign to kind of make that scene our own. And after several takes, we really had what the crux of that scene was. So 
getting to work with Emily and sort of just play back and forth was such a pleasure. Now I, I have to be honest here. Uh, the 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 group you know of with Emily and everybody, I couldn't help but yell at my screen a lot because I was just like, "Why are you guys doing this? Don't do this!" Like. Uh, you're gonna die! Like, come on, get your head in there! Like, you know, it, it, it's it, I, I've seen a lot of horror movies, and and you know, I I, I love those, the, you know, the, the, those teen characters that you know. Always just so disappointed in the cast. Always just you know just because you're like, what are you guys doing? I'm just like, come on! Like, if I was there, little, come on! You know, you you just scream at the thing, but I think that's what makes horror so fun. Um, for a lot of people who know a lot of the the, the horror tropes and whatnot. You know, you, you have your you have your standard people who are going to get killed and, and, you know, you could see that happening. And then you have people that will shock you that will like you didn't expect that coming from like out of nowhere. And then you have, of course, the uh, obviously the there's always the badass in every horror film. Um, Which know, I was, and I appreciate that. There it is um, right there. I mean, you got to hold the shotgun, you know? Who else gets to hold shotguns, you know? Yeah, that's it. That's it. That's but, you know, I was thinking, you know, it's so funny. We talk about the, the horror tropes in movies, and it's always like the group of sexualized teens who right. don't know what's going on, and then all of a sudden the murders happen, right? Right. Well, in this movie, it's sort of different where you have the group of teens. They are sexualized, or at least part of them are. Right. And Some of them. they know exactly what's going on. They know this is happening, but they go to it anyway. Right. It's coming at it from sort of a different angle to, like, let's stop this. Let's let's cut this off at the pass, and it just goes wrong. I mean, I, a little bit of right. a little bit of it all is is kind of playing off of those of the tropes of. I should say more than a little bit. You know, a lot of it is playing off of the tropes of, uh, you know, of you know, not going as far as something where you're literally making a parody of it, like a scream. Right. But, you know, literally letting them be like the teenagers that, you know, you know, like, wait a second, why are you going to go make out in there? Why are you going in there? No, don't go in there. The, the franchise, I think that obviously popularized that the most, probably Friday the 13th. You know what I mean? Like, sure. Yeah, I yeah, mean, it, it's, totally. it's one of those things where you saw the counselors like, why are you letting the kid drown? Come on, like, what are you doing? You know, you're just yelling at your screen and whatnot. But I think, like I said, that's what makes movies like this fun. Because, you you know, you know, as a horror fan, you know a lot of these, a lot of these, you know, styles and tactics and whatnot. And uh, you could kind of, when you first are introduced to the character, you kind of like to give that guess, like, I think he's going to die, she's going to die, he's going to die, you know. And then she might be the badass she you know he might live and you know there were so many times where i was just like and then i had to like change my mind again i'm like oh, wait he might live you know he, he's doing pretty good right now and then he does something later i'm just like oh well there it is but i, I mean i have to say gentlemen this film uh i highly suggest anyone to watch it i've actually gone outside and told my friends i told my, my parents i've told everyone when i first saw this film you gotta watch this film this is like Nick Cage at his finest doesn't say a word in the film. I love that. Uh, like I said, I was shocked when I, I knew Grant had a, a cameo in there, but I didn't know who he was playing. And when I found out he was playing, I was like, no, Grant, what are you doing? <laughs> um, you know, Dave, Christian, you guys did a, a, a phenomenal job with your characters. And uh, I, I really enjoyed this. I, obviously right now with movie theaters not being open, I actually rented it through a uh, voodoo. Um, and I'm planning on buying the film uh, next week when I get paid if it's if it's released to, to that. But I, I definitely want to. Now it will. It's gonna, it's going to be available. I think it's next week that it comes oh. out available to buy. And also Perfect the Blu-ray was just announced as well. So. Perfect timing. And I, I'm hoping now that theaters in California are opened up more. I'm hoping one of the theaters in my area will have a screening because I really wanted to see this in theaters. Like this was one that I really want to go. So if where I, are you? Where are you again? Uh, I'm in Norwalk. Anthony? You're in Norwalk, you know, it was, I believe, if it's, it might still be playing at the drive-in in, in uh, the, like, the Tiki. Yeah, okay. I, I, I think that, and I, I was going to check the Downey Cinemark, too, because they do a lot of films, and maybe even Harkins right here in Cerritos might be playing it, but I, I really want to see, I know my, uh, Sammy, he, we, we watched it together, uh, uh, my co-host, and then he, like, a couple weeks later, he went to go take his, uh, his sister boyfriend, she he wanted to go see it, so they went to go see it in a theater in Arizona, and uh, he said it was way better on the big screen. Like it's you know, I that's I miss. It's been a year since I've been to a movie theater, and I miss the big screen, man. There's nothing. Oh like yeah, it. big time. Uh, 
Yeah. Hey, all- hey, I'll, I'll tell you just something, a little another little tidbit, um, is that, uh, you know, you mentioned that that you were a fan of uh, Christians from from Vine. Yeah. Uh, oh God. He got me through high school. <laughs> him, him and my friends would watch all those videos, and we would. He, I would see him on every compilation, even today. Compilations, you know, like the vines that keep me alive to this day. You're on them, man. I see you all so, the time. <laughs> the trippy thing between Christian that people don't really know, and hopefully they're getting ready to start knowing, is that um, you know he he actually is kind of a classically trained actor who just happens yeah. to be an influencer. You know, most influencers, you know, they just kind of start out doing funny stuff, influencing them. He kind of fell into doing the influencing thing, but it actually trained as an actor. Right. Um, so, uh, you know, it's kind of neat to, um, you know, having gotten a chance to give him something to actually kind of sh- let him to start to be able to show oh, his yeah. skills. Um, because I think uh, people are going to be really surprised at um, when they see what Christian's actually really able to do. I think, he's, you know, he's just kind of scratched the surface so far and what he's able to show people what his abilities are. You right. know? Thank you, Grant. No, Christian, you did a great job, man. I mean, they say the hardest thing to do in showbiz is comedy. And if you can do comedy, you can crush it all, really. I mean, look at Jordan Peele, for for, for, for an example. The guy was Keen Peele, and now he's directing movies like Us and Get Out. Like, where'd that come from, man? That guy, same thing with Danny McBride with Halloween, you know? So, you, you know, you... you like I said, help me get by high school with my friends, man. You released some of the funniest vines that I still remember and quote to this day. And to see you in this film, uh, I was just blown away by your performance, man. So, Well, dude, uh, Anthony, we're going to, Christian and I are developing kind of like a half an hour sketch, sketch comedy show where he's going to be able to do some, a lot of characters and like longer versions of things, right. you know? I, so I'm going to hit you up to, uh, to help us promote the... I'm the here. Show. Let me know. Together, you know, Grant. To go over a bunch of ideas and stuff, but that, that yeah. goes for any of you. You know, you y'all need some. You know, y'all need some free. And we're gonna have to get through. Dave into some of those because Christian, because Dave is so funny, right? Oh, 100 percent, 100 percent. We gotta get Dave and and yeah, we have so much fun together. together. Our little, our little I would love troop, that. Yeah. Well, I, mean, I was gonna say, yeah. I don't know if I was under a rock or something when I was in high school, but like. If you go on Christian's Instagram, if you go on his YouTube, he is such, he's such a good writer. He's such right. a funny writer. Like, he is brilliant. I, I just sit scrolling through, cracking up. So, yeah, if I get to work with Christian and Grant again, that would that's that would be amazing. So, right. we are. We well, are. The, 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 I'd be the luckiest one because these guys are just, uh, like, they're not only really talented, but they're also guys that, that, that bring up the whole the whole morale and attitude of the set, you know, they're real kind of team builders. So that's what you just, you know, love to have around you is just great people that also are really talented and professional and show up and know how to do their job. So, I mean, listen, this is coming from me, man. I, I'm a kid who grew up not, you would have asked me 10 years ago if this was ever going to happen, if I was ever going to talk to, one of my favorite actors from Killer Clowns from Outer Space, man. And I was going to talk with the cast of Willy's Wonderland, you know. I would have said no. Uh, and and I'm just so thankful and grateful for the opportunities. Uh, Christian, like I said, y- you are – you you helped me through high school, man, with – you and other Vine creators, man. You guys made high school better. Dave, just seeing your performance in this, man, I can't wait to see you in more things, man. I, I really – I'm really I'm really looking forward to seeing you in the future. And Grant, I, I am just so fortunate enough to met you finally and talk with you. So, I mean, like I said, any, if you guys any need any promotion whatsoever, you guys just – you hit me up, uh, Instagram, email, whatever. I'm there for you guys. Awesome. Perfect. Awesome. We love it. Yeah. So Thanks a lot, Anthony. Yeah. Thank you, guys. Uh, Willie's Wonderland is available to watch theater at home to rent. It will be coming out. Uh, this podcast will actually be coming out the week of, so it will be available on digital. You said next week, right? Yep. Next week it will be out, so go ahead and check it out. And if it's still in a theater near you or driving, please go support this film. Uh, great film, great cast, great story, and um, I'm hoping for a sequel of some sort because I, I really enjoyed myself with this one and – Maybe Dave comes back in the sequel and kicks all the ass. So, could be. <laughs> uh, was that to use that shotgun? He got to catch it this time. He's got to shoot it the next time. Use- yeah, uh, maybe there. a couple of good head bugs. There. It is. <laughs> what do we see like a tag team duo with him and Nick Cage, man? Like, let's just let's see it come out, man, and then I, I'm ready for it. But. Uh, 
go check out Willie's Wonderland. It's out now. Uh, anywhere you can rent uh, digitally or uh, video on demand uh, in theaters. If it's, if you have it near a theater you, near you, go check it out. Um, with that being said, gentlemen uh, and Beth, who is not here with us uh, anymore, she she had to take off to memorize some lines. But uh, thank you to her as well for coming on the show and sharing a little bit of her experiences. But gentlemen. Thank you so much for taking the time out of your guys' uh, busy schedules to come down, promote the movie a little bit. I hope everyone, like I said, either I've seen this movie or goes to see it because uh, this film is just a great film. And I had fun watching it with my friends. Uh, I know they all loved it, and we still talk about it to this day. Um, thank you guys so much. I hope you guys um, – I can't wait to see what you all do in the future, honestly. I'm, I'm here. You got my support no matter what. Awesome. Thanks, Anthony. Yeah, Thank you, Anthony. We appreciate you. Appreciate it. With that being said, uh, if you guys enjoyed today's podcast or if you're listening on a streaming service, uh, uh, leave some likes, some comments down below what you guys thought about the film, uh, what you thought about the talented people I had with me today on the show. Um, also, follow us on Instagram at the Knights of Horror and on Twitter at Knights of Horror. Uh, hit that subscribe button with that bell notification be where every time we put up a new video. And always remember... If you're going to take a gig at an abandoned Chuck E. Cheese, be prepared for anything that's going to happen. You never know what will happen. You never know if there will be a suicide pact. You, you don't know what's going to happen. Just always be prepared because you may be getting attacked by some kill animatronics. I'll see you guys next week. <laughs>